For more physics related videos, please subscribe. Welcome to the Physics Almanac. In this video, we're going to be covering projectile motion. I've rated the physics level in this video as easiest. In the previous video, we derived the general set of kinematics equations, or equations of motion, under constant acceleration. If you'd like to know where these equations come from, check out that video. Now, in this video, we're going to apply those general equations to projectile motion. So that means motion under gravity near the surface of the Earth, assuming no air resistance or cross breezes or any other forces. In this case, the only forces acting on the projectile while it's in air is gravity. And that's why we can reduce this to two dimensions, because gravity just points up and down, and there are no forces side to side, so the entire motion will take place in a plane. So now that we're dealing with gravity near the surface of the Earth, the y acceleration will be negative g, which is a constant, equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and is the acceleration due to gravity, assuming that down is negative. If you pick down to be the positive direction, then the acceleration will be positive 9.8 meters per second squared. Notice this acceleration is the same for all objects. It does not depend on the object mass. All objects fall at the same rate, regardless of their mass, assuming no air resistance. So now we just have to plug in a sub y equals negative g into this set of three equations. First, I'm going to write the position equation, and I'm going to write it slightly differently. I'm going to write it as delta y, which means the change in y, so the change in vertical position. All I've done here is I've moved this initial y position to the other side to get y minus y initial and that's the change in y. So we have that the change in the y coordinate, or the vertical coordinate, is equal to the initial y velocity times time minus 1 half g t squared. We can then plug in a sub y equals negative g to the y velocity equation to get that the y velocity equals the initial y velocity minus g times time. Now how about the x dimension, the horizontal dimension? Well, gravity only points down, it doesn't point side to side, so there is no acceleration in the x direction, meaning ax is zero. While this is still technically an acceleration equals constant situation, it's a special case, because if the acceleration is zero, remember that the acceleration is the change in velocity, then that means that the change in velocity is zero, so the velocity is constant in the x direction. So this is actually a special case of velocity is constant. Plugging in the acceleration is zero into the x position, we get that the change in x is equal to the initial x velocity times time. But the initial x velocity is the x velocity at all times because a zero acceleration means your velocity is constant. So we don't have to specify the initial x velocity, we can just call it the x velocity. It's the same at all times. So there you have it. For projectiles near the surface of the Earth, our one equation of acceleration equals constant and acceleration equals zero in the case of the x velocity gives us three separate equations. One for the x position, one for the y position, and one for the y velocity. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please be sure to like and subscribe. Maybe share it with your classmates and friends. Conceptually, it's good to keep in your mind that the x velocity is constant, which is equivalent to saying that the x acceleration is zero and that the y acceleration is negative g which is constant. Now these three black equations are all you need to solve every single projectile motion problem you'll ever get. If you're in a course that allows you to have a cheat sheet, you should not be writing down anything else than these three black equations, and you can maybe write down these blue equations as a conceptual reminder, but for solving any problems, these three black equations are all you need. Having said that, there are two optional equations you could add that might be useful and they just come from combining two of the three black equations. For the first one, we're going to combine the x position equation and the y position equation. First thing we're going to do is that we're going to solve this equation for time. Solving for time gives us that time equals delta x over vx. Now I'm going to plug that in to the y equation. Now remember that the velocity is a vector, so the initial velocity is also a vector, it has a horizontal component, the x velocity, and a vertical component, the initial y velocity. And it points in some direction, which I'm going to call theta. The horizontal component is the adjacent side to this angle theta. So remembering your trig, adjacent over hypotenuse equals cosine theta. 
so the x velocity equals the initial velocity times cosine theta, where theta is the direction your projectile was initially sent. The initial y velocity is the opposite side, so opposite over hypotenuse gives you sine theta. So we have this other equation that is sometimes useful, which relates the y position to the x position. This equation gives you the physical parabolic path that an object will trace out in space. This equation may be useful if you're asked a question that doesn't involve time, it just involves x position and y position. In that case, you could just jump to this equation if you know it, but you don't need it. You can still get the answer starting from these two equations, which were two of our three original kinematics equations. It will just save you the step of eliminating time. Now, sometimes this equation is written slightly differently using the fact that v naught y over vx equals tangent theta. Then you can substitute that vx equals v naught cosine theta into the vx squared here. But it's the same equation. The other optional equation will come from combining the y velocity equation and the y position equation. So again here, I'm going to solve the velocity equation for time to get that the time equals vy initial minus vy divided by g. Remember that vy is a function of time, it's not a constant. I'm now going to take this expression for time and substitute it into the y equation, but before that I'm going to do one extra step and rearrange the y equation by pulling out a factor of t over 2 from everything. So in this term I have an extra factor of 2 because I've pulled out a 1 half which isn't here, and then this term already has a t over 2 in it, so we're just left with g times t. Now I'm going to substitute our blue expression for time into this equation. And if we look at this part in the brackets, we have a g multiplying something that has a 1 over g, so these g's are going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with 2 v naught y minus v naught y, and then minus a minus, so plus v y. So this gives me the following expression. 2 v naught y minus v naught y is just v naught y. So that part in the parentheses will become v naught y plus v y. And you may recognize that this piece times this piece is a difference of squares. We have v naught y minus v y times v naught y plus v y. Foiling that out will give us v naught y squared minus v y squared. And I'm going to bring this factor of 2g over to this side of the equation to get that 2g times delta y equals v naught y squared minus v y squared. And finally, I'm going to isolate the v y squared term to get that v y squared equals v naught y squared minus 2g delta y. So this is also a useful equation you may want to have in your back pocket or write down on your cheat sheet, but again, you don't need it. It's useful if you have a question involving a y velocity and a y position, but such a question could still be solved starting with these two equations. Questions involving this equation though are quite common because this is actually the equation of conservation of energy. And conservation of energy is a very important concept in physics, but if you're learning projectile motion, you probably haven't gotten to conservation of energy yet. So often what will happen is the physics professor will give you a lot of questions involving this equation in order to set you up in the future for conservation of energy. And by the way, this equation holds for a general acceleration. Remember that in our case we have the acceleration is equal to negative g, so for a general acceleration this would be v naught y squared plus 2a times delta y. Here we have that a equals negative g. So we can now go back to our set of equations for projectile motion, and we can add our two optional equations. And again remember, you do not need these to solve projectile motion problems. They are useful because they might save you the step of eliminating time in problems that don't involve time. Now if you have a cheat sheet, this is the maximum amount of equations you should be writing down for projectile motion. I strongly discourage you from writing anything else. So many times I've seen students fill up their cheat sheet with half a dozen different variations of these projectile motion equations, and this is a very bad idea. For one, if you're finding that you're doing this, that's a sign that you don't actually understand what's going on here in which case adding non-essential equations is only going to make things more confusing. When you get to your test, you're going to get a variation you've never seen before, because professors aren't stupid, and you're going to be staring at half a dozen or more equations going, well, which one do I pick? Whereas if you only write down three equations, well, you only have three to pick from. So even if you're completely lost, you can just try those three equations to see if one of them works. If, on the other hand, you do understand what's going on, well then you don't need to write down extra equations in the first place, you already get that these three equations are all you need, and if you truly understand what's going on, then the only equation you really need is 
acceleration equals constant. Everything else follows from that. Now I want to point something out here. If we take a look at the variables in these three equations, we have delta x, we have vx, we have time, so that's three already in the first equation. Then we have delta y, or the y position, that's four. We have the y velocity, that's five, and that's it. So there are a total of five variables, but we only have three equations. So that means that you need to know two of them in order to solve this. So any word problem involving projectile motion will have to give you information for at least two of these variables. So keep that in mind when you're reading these problems, at least two things in here have to be given. And oftentimes they might even give you more, or if they give you less, then they'll give you a situation where you only need two of these equations or maybe one of these equations to solve it. And the final thing you should keep in mind about projectile motion problems is that probably about 90% of them will involve three special points. When time equals zero, which is the initial point in the trajectory, when the y velocity is zero, which is the top of the trajectory, and when y equals zero, which is when the object lands. Now, this won't necessarily be when y equals zero. It'll be y equals zero if you call the ground height zero. Now, a projectile motion problem does not have to involve these three points. You could, in principle, get a question regarding any point along the trajectory, but the vast majority of questions will involve these three points. So you should keep that in mind and recognize when you're being asked a question regarding one of these three points. Now that we know and understand the equations for projectile motion, we can go on to actually solving projectile motion problems. And this can be done in five easy steps. Check out my next video on how to solve them. And if you've made it this far in this video, please like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for the release of future videos. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.